Uh, I'm Shox, your second year fellow here um, at USF, and we're going to talk about rabies today. Feel free to stop me anytime. Um, I'm not rabies, believe me. Okay, this is the quad. The WHO is not here, but they say that every year, probably about 50 to 60,000 patients die from encephalitis. This is like the, it's, it's, it's the tip of the iceberg. Why? Because most of encephalitis and third world, they don't have definite diagnosis. So they say die from encephalitis. So they're probably more. Um, this is uh, the budget they use here in US, $300 million. Do you have that many rabies here? No. Why? You use, I mean, if in the ER, I guess they stock um, human rabies, immunoglobulin, which is from human. It's probably 10 times more expensive than what we use in third world or somewhere else, not here. In Europe, in Africa, in Asia, they use um, immunoglobulin from horses, which is much more um, cheaper. That's, so here, rabies, if you have one here, let me know you have a case report. They love to have it here. Um, so boring things is belong to rhabdovirus. It looks like a bullet to you. It has seven sister and bro brother. The most classic one is um, genus, genus one, zero type one, rabies. Um, um, Lisa rabies virus. Um, it claimed that is the oldest communicable disease in human because it was documented in, in pyramid in the Egyptian that with that picture symbol that had the mad dog uh, bite one person and that person die. So. This is what they claim. Um, around the world, it's not wildlife, it's pets. Just here that you have raccoon, skunk, and bats here. Um, this is in the US, so we are in the raccoon area. Um, oh, bats is everywhere, too. Um, OK, this is, don't be surprised, this is in, in, in the animal. So we have cases elsewhere, um, including in Florida, too. But I don't know why it's more on around New York and Pennsylvania. Um, transmission, of course, um, is mainly um, saliva. Uh, enormous of virus is in saliva. And um, scratch, mucous membrane, skin break, this is all contagious. Okay? So, some person that um, got uh, bitten in both the eye or, or, mu or mucosa, such as genitalia, in real life, we do use IVIG, I mean the immunoglobulin dilute it two, three times and rinse that area, okay? It's not in CDC guideline yet, but that's what we have done in real world. Um, it's also, yes, of course, person to person, organ transplant, yes. Um, one thing that I emphasize is at Tampa General is not every person that have the brain dead from unknown cause can be transplanted. There, and it's, it's beautiful when we have one case because all of a sudden, a sudden you have 10 patients together with rabies, encephalitis. Remember corneas, you can give two, liver, that's one, pancreas, that's another one, heart, lung. When you look in the literature, it's kind of a cluster of encephalitis in somewhere that they don't, do not family with rabies because they ignore that. And that uh, happens um, every once a year or once in blue moon. This is airborne. Um, it's it's not, but the thing is, there is some um, the document of the cave explorer in Australia. Three of them, they went to the cave, have a lot of bats and bat dropping. One of them developed encephalitis, and they they proved it's rabies. So they don't really know how that person got it because with the cave explorer suit, he's all he's well covered. So only route that he could get it in hell. We leave that blank so far. Lab, yes, we have here probably 10 years ago in Philadelphia that uh, one of the co-worker in the labs got um, infected by rabies. Um, um, this is a pathogenesis. It's pretty simple. Um, you got bit. Uh, it depends on the amount of the viruses in the saliva. It gets in your body. It has to inoculate in muscle cell. So it binds to nicotinic receptor get into the muscle cell and having party. They're just going to replicating, try to hang around, enjoy the time, and then it will jump to NM junction, go to peripheral nerve, and climbing up roughly less than two centimeters a day to spinal cord. And once it's reached spinal cord, it's going to go fast to your brain, and that's it. So is it possible that if the dog bit you, the rabbit dog bit you, and the Viruses jump to NM junction and go to peripheral nerve right away. Yes. Why I mentioned that? Remember, neuro neuron is neuro um, is um, immunoprotective organ. So when the virus jump to your peripheral nerve or your spinal cord, 
no matter how much you give vaccine or immunoglobulin, you cannot stop that. So the golden period is you have to give the vaccine and immunoglobulin before they finish the party in the monster cell. So I say that, I mean, in, in, in literature, CDC say here is urgent, not emergency. But on the third world, when if it's really rabbit dogs and it bit you, and of course we have like working out, right? If the patient come to see me like six o'clock, the er everywhere close, I would say, hey, it's your life. Get immunoglobulin tonight. I don't care how. I don't care how much expensive. You have to call around, ask for somewhere else to open. But here, the standard here is they ask the patient to wait until the next day to get immunoglobulin because it's not very common here. But to me, especially in that guy that I showed you the picture that got a bit in the um, face. Face and finger have a lot, tons of neuron there, you, you know it. So it, the chance to get to the nerve and get to the brain is much, much more than thigh or leg. So I would say that's emergency. Okay. So here in Florida, of course, record, like I mentioned, um, exposure depends on how much the receptor over there, how much the trauma that you have over there at the by side. Um, in the bats, it's very atypical. They don't know, it's not very classic rabies in the bats. Most of the time it's just dumb rabies, and we're going to talk about it. So they don't know the really pathogenous is yes compared to the dog rabies. Um, so the, the bite is much more um, risky than scratch, as mentioned, because a lot of trauma in there. Um, non bite, like I mentioned, is un unusual. Um, th this is, they, they want to, with this picture, they come up with a new CDC guideline. This is a fang of the bats. You barely sense, I mean, it's, you barely have the symptom and you barely see it. So the CDC guideline is when you have the bat, in, let's say in your kid's room, it found out dead and you check the kids, there's no exposure, there's no fang mark, you have to treat the kids as the bat by the kids. Um, okay, it's so like I mentioned, you, it went to muscle cell first, having party, and once it's ready, it's go to nicotinic, um, it's go to the NMM junction and go up. So, you have to attack rabies before it come to the NMM junction. This picture, Dr. Ayler. If Dr. Sinod and Dr. Ayler got bit together, and it climbed up to a centimeter a day, who will die first? Dr. Ayler. <laughs> so, <laughs> Don't worry, sir. Doctor, you will last probably two days longer. Um, oh, I record this. I'm not in. Oh, shoot. Um, okay. Um, rabies in viruses. When you dissect the brain, um, you will see it's it love to be in thalamus, brain stem, basal ganglion, and spinal cord. So when you get the 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 dog, you want to examine those area. Why it caused furious symptom? We don't know. Which organ system respond for emotional? Limbic. Limbic heck amygdala and um I cannot remember the other names. But anyhow in those organs it have less um concentration of rabies. So until now we don't know why patient become furious. So once it gets to the brain, it's come back to the nerve too. Rabies doesn't have wiremere. Don't even think about do PCR. I has been killing dogs, I mean rabbit dogs, uh, probably t more than three or four dozen. I want to prove that I'm the first person that um, they discover rabies while in the blood. So I kill the dog when they sick. I get the uh, blood from the heart and I do the PCR myself, all negative. So it's really neuron specific, it's come down to the nerve. Um, mainly a lot in, um, um, to the salivary gland, that's why you're going to have, some, some, some of the human is going to have the same experience, they're going to have a lot of saliva, and, and that saliva is going to have baby virus. Um, but also, like I mentioned, it went to other organs, to, to the nerve, yes, patients are going to have myocarditis, going to have, some have pancreatitis, some have liver shock, like a um, liver enzyme coming up, so you will see them too, and that's why patients die. Why? How? How patient? How rabi? How rabi patient? Um, dead, myocarditis, and um, respiratory muscle failure. Um, diagnosis most of the time is still clinical and history. Um, what else you can do in the rabi patient? Unfortunately, antibody is not coming up. 
um, it's usually patient die before the antibody coming out. So check antibody is not in the case. Some places such as um, CNS, you can check antibody either, but um, I didn't show you a picture, but it's pretty risky. I imagine someone gonna hold a patient in the front like this, and his mouth is probably three three inches from your belly, and he's rabbit, and someone tap him in the back. It's it's kind of scary. Even me, I still flip the coin with my friend that who gonna hold the patient and who gonna tap. So I am immune, but I, it's still pretty scary. Um, what else? It's this another method. It's pretty sensitive. It's a skin biopsy. Um, you can't ask the derm to do their skin biopsy. What they want is to get the um, the, um, the hair cell of the um, 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 uh, around the skin and just stain it. It usually the rabies come to the nerve, so you will see the rabies rise over there. Another thing is you can do trans um, orbital biopsy, some piece of the uh, the brain. Um, staging, incubation, animation, prodome, acute neurologic phase, coma, and death. Um, a typical rabies that you're gonna see here, if you see one, it's not classic like this. It can be present you at any stage. Um, incubation period is very, like I mentioned, it depends how long they have poly in your muscle cell. And um, most of the time it's four weeks. Most of the time. Depends on how long too. Like that guy got bit in the face. Come on, how long does it take from here to the brain? Six inch? So he got bit two weeks ago and that's it. He dead on day 17. Um, so if you got bit in the legs, proto might be longer. Um, Okay. Um, the prodome is classic one. Prodome is uh, it's uh, the pathology is, is the transition of peripheral nerve to s spinal cord. So, patient we have sciatica, quote unquote, symptom, um, numbness, itching around the dermatome of the bite. It can be ipsilateral. Let's say the patient got a bitten in the hands. Patient might have scratchy in the in, in on, on the legs. Um, it's something weird that you might not see before. Some some patient come to see me with they scratch their f on the, the limb, the same limb that they got bitten, and give they bled and they keep scratching on their on their own blood. I'm like I'm still it's still really itching. How could they do? They scratch deep to the muscle, so it's kind of exotic. But if you have history of dog bite and you have this kind of thing, you just have to go around and talk to the family that dead is coming. Um, this is not a good picture, but this guy scratched the legs. To the, you can see the raw area right here. So, um, so a patient can have anything burning, numbness, tingling, itching. So I call it sciatica phase because you're gonna feel it like a dermatome. Um, okay, the classic one that we talk about, the furious rabies. Two third, we have encephalitis from ra um, furious. Um, they are aggressive. They want to fight. They want to hit you, kind of things. Like in that movie, eh, a little bit. Um, usually, patient will die in seven days after after they enter the acute neurologic phase. Um, if you have furious dog right here and bite Dr. Ehler and bite Dr. Sinat, Dr. Sinat might have dumb rabies. Why right? Dr. Ehler might have furious rabies? So it depends. You you will not get that um, classic picture. <laughs> um, okay, so furious rabies, what you guys usually hyperactivity, um, acrobat, thirst, fear, light, noise, fever, this is the things, um, fever almost over 100%. When I got a call and I was working back there, when they called me some with some other hospital, they say, hey, this person have encephalitic picture. Is patient have rabies? We don't have the story because um, family cannot provide anything. I asked the first question is story of the dog bite? Yes. And then does patient have a fever? If they say no, that's not rabies. Almost 100% patient have very high fever, constant at all time. It's very hard to break with, with the pen um, or Tylenol. Um, it's very hard to bring the fever down too. Um, and some this three major cardinal size is a fluctuating conscious that I mentioned that patient can have a good time and then it's a picture and that's um, fluctuating consciousness going to be worse and worse and worse. Patient we have phobic, either hydro or aerophobic and patient can have autonomic um, dysfunction like I showed you the picture. Um, phobic, they say that is um, 
exaggeration of defensive effects. So the virus screw up with respiratory motor neuron and cause hyper gag reflex to the patients. Um, they will have severe contraction of the whole neck muscle and diaphragm. And later, they will feel terror. So, like I mentioned, even the word that close to water that used to trigger it before, patient cannot develop the phobia. Um, okay. Um, can I this is a classic. Um, someone gonna fan him, and you can see this is a classic phobia. He's right now. Okay, you see it. He's in pain. Let's one more time. Um, so, oops. Okay. So you can see that when he see the fan is coming, he already in terror. Is it? And then this is the whole chest and neck contraction. It's painful, to be honest. And after that, if you just show the fan or just water, he gonna have the same things. Okay, this is the other autonomic dysfunction that I mentioned: hypersaliva, saliva, erection, um, neurogenic pyloedema. You're gonna see in the end because patient gonna have pyloid failure from that and excessive sweating, um, priapism. Dumb rabies here is very hard to diagnose. Honestly, I have seen just one or twice. Um, it looks like Guillain Barre, honestly, and a lot in I even in intimate area. Um, we still most some of them we still misdiagnose and give them IVIG. So it can present with anything except for this. Patient can be like more quiet, more drowsy. Um, and like I mentioned, it is close to Guillain Barre. It has longer survival, five days. Um, okay, this is the one that looked like in the movie. Um, this is a child got bitten. Also, th uh, all the hands and legs are tired, and he, he wants to bite his mom. As see the water. Um, in the field moment, you're gonna see. Yeah, here we go. They love to spit because all of the gags muscle they could not swallow saliva. So they were thirsty and they have a lot of saliva. They could not swallow it, so they, you can see it here. And sometimes they have grimace. Here we go. So it's kind of aggressive. When you see rabies, patient wants you remember this for the rest of your life, and you don't want to see it again. So okay. Um. So with um persistent fever, and the um, percussion myodima doesn't help that much. Remember the one that I mentioned that you. Um, put your hammer jerk into the muscle and it's gonna come up. It's not very classic and bladder dysfunction is another one. And history, history, animal bite. Um, okay, this is my oedema. Um, it's not a very good picture but you see here the muscle is molding, climbing up. So I, when I s and it's very hard to say where, so it's like you talk to your patient, so you approach the patient with a hammer jerk and you start to hit them <laughs> all over the body uh, with the big muscle plate, it's like deltoid or pectoris. Coma. Um, usually they will have pulmonary and circulatory failure um, and patient will die pretty soon. At that point, it's very hard to calm down the patient. You you will not believe that how much I give the patient morphine and ketamine all together. Try to just calm patient down. So if you have one, just give whatever you want. It's not anything like overdose. Um, the dose that you give to regular patient probably is not a third of it that they use. Um, any recovery in the past? Yes, 16 of them I kept counting. I just checked like two days ago. It's in the past 100 years. This, um, the special thing is the last one was here in, in Wisconsin. I'm sure you heard about it in 04. This lady, um, 16 years old, got bitten by the, a bat, um, and then she didn't tell anyone. And then a month later, she had encephalitis. Um, somehow they managed to in, um, to do the phenobarb coma on the patients. They the theory is the more um, the more the more cytokine in their brain, the more damage it is. So they want to induce coma. Let's minimize all everything. Put patient in deep sleep and then wait until antibody rise up and that her own antibody, you attack the rabies. It works. I 
actually I had a video clip it doesn't work right here she survived after a month in the hospital but she's she I would not say it's it's very good outcome she she's 16 but her mentality went back to probably six years old with a lot of attacks here and this atria. Um after that article published that person Dr. Willoughby and uh, CDC got hit by the whole world including my boss too because that protocol that they use we have done it for 10 years even me I have done it in the dog too it's it never worked so in the end I will show you um, the website that's they conducted the theory of the bodies so lab test you want to check anybody in CSF but I don't think you want to tap the person honestly here uh, without proper vaccination before I mean even me I'm still scared um, you can do the, the easiest thing here get the derm ask them to do skin biopsy you should come back in two days the baby stain will be positive forget about blood PCR or brain biopsy I don't think anyone gonna do it here just history and physical you have more than enough um, MRI it just show um, a little bit enhancing here um, it's not specific so if you want to do it, it's fine. Is that going to tell anything? No. Yes, if you want to rule out tumor. Right now, I'm expert. Until that, I can tell this is dog a rabbit or not. Why? Don't be lie because I, I run this clinic. I, I see both animal and the patient because they bring the animal. This is the, the normal dog set, right? This is a rabbit dog. You see the hind legs? It's weak. They could not sit on their legs like this. Number two, spontaneous erections. Number three, if you give them a, a, a plate full of water, of water, and you just wash them five minutes, just, just keep licking the water, keep licking. Five minutes goes by, level of water is the same. Why? When they lick it, when the water comes to the tongue, it's dropped right back because the muscle spasm, the water couldn't get through the, 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 the back. So it's kind of like, okay, enough. I know that you get something. So, um, and so we keep the dogs and get the brain to confirm that, but most of the time you can tell since we see the dogs. Um, Rebi, whereas it's very easy to inactivate air, just expose it. So, if you have some patient in ER, I have the bite, fang, very bad one. If it's pet, fine, I don't care. If it's something that you don't know, like raccoon, please do not do the suture. Leave it open. If it's really bad, very, very bad, you can do that um, a suture mark. Just try to approximate the skin together and not it like let it come out and clean it every day. If you if you're pretty sure that patient doesn't have any symptom and you you treat the patient with very immunoglobulin and vaccines and you can bring that person back and ask the plastic to suture them two weeks later. Scar is not that bad at all, but please do not suture them. Wash them pretty much, and I'm gonna talk about how to give immunoglobulin later. So the rabies was very easy in the environment. Just the heat and moist will kill them. Um, so like I mentioned, that here is urgency. At Tama General, let's say someone goes there with an animal bite. At TGH, they don't have the rabies immunoglobulin store in house. It's kind of because it's human, like I mentioned. It's very ex expensive. It's very hard to find here. So I think the health department stock that. So the ER doctor have to call health department to to prepare for those. And that person gonna refer to health department to be injects over there. Um, they know how to do it over there, but I'm not sure in ER here how could they do so the error. Um, I work in some at uh, animal bike clinics and um, to be honestly around Thailand area our neighbor they don't have immunoglobulin so a lot of time I would say 100% that US Army fly someone to see me for me to give them immunoglobulin next day two days later you should treat the same thing so out there it's very um, it's very hard to find uh, um, immunoglobulin. So if you want to go to third world, come on, why risk your life, right? Get two shots of vaccine before you go, and that's it. You done deal. You don't need any immunoglobulin ever in your life. Once you get, if even if you get a, a rabbit dog bite you, you just get, need a booster. So, um, what else I want to say? Okay. So if you see someone that got bitten, 
long times ago and you just see him right now, you have to treat the same way. Even though that bite side already healed up, you have to give Immunogoblin on the same limb. Let's say the bite side is here, you get all Immunogoblin on the same limb, which is Deltoid. If it's on the leg, give him the Botox. Um, animal bites, please do not overkill it. How bad it is, I run, I see probably 500 animal bite kits a month. The strongest antibody I use is Augmentin, and I use it rarely. Amoxicillin is more than enough. The key is dressing, guys. Just just clean it, do the dressing every day. Antibiotic is not necessary. And if it needs, Amoxicillin is enough. I put my head on that. And if it's worse, you just need to be drained, or you can step up to Augmentin. And that's it. No fluoroquinolone. Like I mentioned, this kit got bit real bad. Um, so th this is the state that I put is pretty... I mean, this sent from each other because the next day when I ask the kid to come back, I can put the syringe and push the, the, the saline um, in the wound, kind of clean it every day. This is not a, the definite stage, but we have a lot of bite like this in the clinic. Okay, okay, the way to inject immunoglobulins, it depends on body weight. So you times that to the um, concentration. Let's say it's a human, it's 40 international unit per kg so when you inject it you inject as much as you could in the back wound you do not create more trauma when you stick the needle in you stick in the wound and let's say um, uh, if this is a bite wound you put a needle in that wound you go to the side go along the way to the end infiltrate push back, push back, push back, push back, push back, one done. Same thing, another side, and same thing beneath the wound. You do not just keep hitting, hitting, and hitting, or create more trauma. Why? You don't want to induce that virus to nerve ending, right? You might poke to the nerve ending by accident, and actually you would sell that induce the trauma, oh sorry, induce the virus to the nerve. So create no more, no more trauma. The tricky place is just a finger. If you have like 10 cc to give in the finger, can you do that? No, you infiltrate as much as you could. You can wait like 5 minutes, let the swelling um, came down and in, in, infuse more as much as you could and then the rest you give on the same limb. Remember the antibodies, this is, this is a passive one. The vaccine that you're going to give is an active one. So do not give vaccine and immunoglobulin on the same limb. If you have the bite side on this side, you give immunoglobulin on here. If it's not, I mean, if you cannot infuse at all, you give the rest in the deltoid. Vaccine is going to be the other side. There's regimen out there for post exposure. The key is they want to um, to beat and to beat the virus transmission from the mu muscle cell to the um, um, peripheral nerve. So they let's say if you have the tail here and I give him the vaccine. It takes probably 14 days until the vaccine rises above the protective level. We want to beat this 14 days because without immunoglobulin, let's say if you are in somewhere else that they don't have immunoglobulins, if you can shot that to 7 days, the second be better? Yes, if the, let's say the virus jump from the muscle cell to the peripheral nerve on day 8, you save life, right? So right now they come up with different kind of vaccine to give. Um, the worst one is from Oxford. They give eight players. Deltoid, two of them. I'm sorry, two, two pectoris, two deltoid, two in the back, and two in the thigh. Is it shorting? Yes, probably one or two days. But if you have immunoglobulin available, don't even think about it. You don't have to. You, you don't need to do this. Um, this is my uh, regimen, Thai Red Cross. We come up with that too, and the, the viewers already approved that. It's a little bit easier for four, four, four players, two players, two players, and four players. This is the one that I mentioned from Oxford. Um, if you get rabies vaccine beforehand and you got a rabid dog bite you, what can happen? You need two booster, and that's it. And usually if you have the cluster of the dogs that you put one is rabbit. If let's say if you have ten dogs, I mean none of them got vaccine, so they prone to have infection, right? If you get rid of one dogs, in those ten, about two we have a cow rabies and 
reveal later. So you want to kill them all, honestly. That's that's my job. So we end up with if you have a cluster of the dogs somewhere, they have one dog that have rabies, so we have to approach all the dogs under the table. It's, it's cruel to kill them all. It's What did they do wrong? Nothing. But we just have to kill them all to prevent further cases of the human. So we end up like this, the pile of the dogs in the back of the car. Um, this is the, the CDC guideline here. So if you have the animal bite, um, you just have to see that is that animal at risk or not. At risk or not here, they consider wildlife here at is animal that are risk to have rabies, such as raccoon, skunk, um, bats. But out there, anything can be possible. I got a call one day, like from the north part of Thailand, that there's a group of squirrel dancing around traffic light, try to buy a car. I'm like, okay, you know what? Just kill them all and preserve up the brain. We send a team. So they they kill them all. Three of them is come back rabies. I mean, it's, it's from a fox strain. So anything, it, if it's mammal out there, third row, it can be rabies. So, um, so here, if you can observe the animal 10 days, okay, let's say someone pets, they don't want to pay for the vaccine. Here, the, in the US, the protocol for the dog is, uh, once the dog is 16 years old, they give one shot of rabies and then one year and at the second shot and then every three years somewhere else every year <laughs> because here the risk is pretty low but if someone let's say I it's my pet but I didn't bring him to see the wet and never received the vaccine you can you have second option you observe animal for 10 days isolate cage see for 10 days the rule is if animal is rabid it die by 10 days most of the time, 95% on day 4, they be die. If they survive on 11 day, that animal doesn't have rabies. 100% specific, 100% sensitive. You don't have to kill them. But if it's not so sure, just get me a brain. It's easier. I mean, you know right away, and you don't have to risk for a rabies vaccine or email company and say, hey, just go home. Get the tetanus shots and you're fine. Um, so if you have a rabies case, what do you do? You talk to family. Don't talk to the patient. It's not going to make any sense. You talk to them like, hey get the coffin, um, get the flower, um, get everyone together and we're gonna make patient less suffer as we could. Um, okay, let me keep going. So, um, if you want, if someone gave me a brand, I'm gonna cut out the brain, uh, brain stem and um, hippocampus, 100% positive, this is rabies. So, the understand is like two minutes. So, I can tell patient in three minutes. So, when they come to see me with a dog. I'm like, you want to wait 10 days to keep the dogs in the cage, isolate cage? Uh, we not them to allow to, to take the dog back because if it's rabbit, it might transmit to other dogs. Okay, so we have a cage. Keep it here 10 days, you come back on day 11 and you get a vaccine now. Or, let me kill it. And then I tell you in two minutes. So it depends. Okay, no, guys, background is in animal, we have uh, in, in, in Thailand, in Bangkok, let's say we have. 4 million people live in Bangkok. We have 2 million stray dogs in the street, for God's sake. It's a Buddhist country. We cannot kill them. And they get to keep breeding, 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 and it's on the street, and we're so kind. So what, it's the, uh, the dog in the third world don't eat, what's pedigree? It's a food can. It's whatever you eat, love, and you just throw it to them. So it just like, keep growing, breeding. So. Stray dog is everywhere. I mean, I, I swear, if you land in Bangkok, you come out from the airport. I mean, the a uh, the airport, and you in the taxi, the first thing you're gonna see is stray dogs. So I mean, they don't care. Over there, they say, you know what? Kill it. It's not my dogs. I'm like, okay, fine. So usually, I so I keep the dog. I exempt the dog. And I tell them, okay, you need vaccine or you need vaccine because the cost of treatment over there is pretty expensive. Even with the equine immunoglobulins. Um, it costs probably like a um, 50 bucks, but 50 bucks over there, they can live for half month. So it's kind of bother over there. Um, so that's the way we do. And this is Negri body. When you stand with for a first scene, you can see the this one, classic one, light up like this. It's our class inclusion body that filled with rabies virus. But this is your. Um, this is um, different kind of saying that show eosinophilic, you know, eosinophilic granule. 
um, and this is a real recovery case in Wisconsin. Um, let's get the pass real quick. So they dumped the patient with amantadine, right by urine, which I has been using before I started the residency. This is the same protocol that CDC gave us to try in the dogs. So we have done this, and not just like us, Canada, Africa. We have tried this before, it didn't work. I don't know why they threw this thing at this kit, and it's come up working. So they, they put the phenobarb, high dose, Rebarberine, amantadine. At one point, she developed leukopenia, so they stopped amantadine, and they put her back on again. So, and they checked the titer of antibodies in the blood, like every three days. They stopped induce the coma once the antibodies above the protective level, and she did okay. Um, yes, yeah, what I mentioned that overexcited in the brain will cause more damage, so they just put it asleep. Pardon? Yes, she is. She is. Um, so, uh, once they published the article in New England Journal, they got hit around the world. So they said that clearly something worked, but they don't know what is working. Um, anyhow, they opened the website to invite all over the world to do the same protocol. This is um, six months ago. They put um, the um, the number of the players that download that protocol and agree the copyright to do the protocol as they recommend. It's five and zero. I checked it last time three months ago. It fourteen and zero. No one survived. And I checked it two days ago. This website already terminates. <laughs> so it's it's not working. So they already delete this website. Um, so at this point, this nothing works so far. Prevention is the key. Um, um, appropriate treatment at the first time when patient comes uh, probably is is the key. This person and this person got dog bite. She's a female. She faint. This is a, a male, and he got excited and he pulled his leg back. So you see that this is more beautiful. So if something bites you, just try to be calm. Think, let it go, let it go, and you get a beautiful. Also like this. I have to suture this guy. So. All right.